I think what happens to a lot of these preachers, the reason they quit pre they preach strong for a while and people start criticizing them and they back off of it, is because they believe that they're th as bad as what people say they are. And pastors said, you're not as good as they say you are. And you're not as bad as they say you are. You're just somewhere in between. You're just an average person that God has chosen to use. And so I've always done my best to preach truth to people and to tell the truth, you know, the way I see it. But um, in this day and time, I believe that the day is coming, and I believe we're there, that people are going to begin to leave some of these seeker-sensitive churches, and I'm not against them. I love these guys. I really do. But I believe they're going to start leaving some of these seeker-friendly churches in droves, like Israel leaving Egypt. And when the things happen in the world that's happening, and they intensify, people's going to leave those churches because they're not hearing what they need to hear, and they're going to say, give me a man or woman of God that'll tell me the truth. That's where we are. People are wanting to know what the world is going on, and they're not hearing it behind their pulpits. And you can't be afraid to preach it. You can't be intimidated to preach it. You can't be afraid you're going to lose a big tither. You can't be afraid of losing social media people. I don't even pay attention to social media. I'm not on Facebook, never have been on Facebook, never will be on Facebook. I don't care about Facebook. But, you know, people want to hear today. Yes, they do. And uh, anyway, we're, the word fierce there, the reason I titled it fierce, is because the, the word there for perilous times, as Paul said, in the last days, fierce times will come. It's actually the word fierce. And we're living in those fierce times. And Jesus talked about it. The Apostle Paul dealt with it. But here's one of the things about the Apostle Paul that we need to look at. Peter preached to the Jews. Different, different apostles preached to different nationalities and different groups, but Paul was the Gentile apostle. God raised him up to preach to the apostles. Now, he was the highly trained in the Judeo beliefs. You know, he was highly trained in, in Judaism, but God sent him to the Gentiles. Well, who was the Gentiles? They were the heathen. They were the people that practiced sexual stuff. They were the ones that practiced immorality, and so they didn't have that Judeo background so when the Apostle Paul started dealing with the Gentiles, they didn't have the teachings of Moses. They didn't have the writings of Abraham. And so they got saved, and Paul began to establish churches. They got saved, but they didn't have any Mosaic teachings or any Abraham influence. Uh, Paul did, but Paul had to deal with people that got saved now, but they had no teachings on morals. They had no background in how to live holy. So the Apostle Paul was constantly saying things to these people like this. You have heard that it hath been said, but I tell you again. He had to constantly remind them adultery is wrong. He had to constantly remind them homosexuality is a sin. He had to constantly remind them that fornication is a sin. And so he was reminding these people that came from that Gentile heathen background, you can't do those things. And here's one thing I want to say. I do not believe, and I will never believe, that the message that's being preached today of this excessive grace, and I do believe in grace, and I treasure it, and I preach it, but this excessive grace that really gives you a license to really live any way you want to live and just throw caution to the wind and say, well, once saved, always saved. Whenever I die, I'm going to heaven. That's mighty risky. That's a risky way to live. That's called Calvinism. But if you read the writings of the Apostle Paul, and I'm going to just give you a few of these. He, he was writing to different churches. It's really interesting how he began to address these churches. And he said to the church at, um, at Corinth, listen to his writings. This is so unusual. Now, he's writing to heathens. He's their apostle, but he's writing to them. But look what he says. I got it in a different version. This is in the NIV. Paul said, do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? He uses the word inherit. Do not be deceived, he said. So he starts with, do you not know? In other words, he's talking to these Gentiles. You don't have the writings of Moses. You don't have the teachings of Abraham. Have you never heard that wrongdoers are not going to inherit the kingdom of God? 
And then he says this. He says that many people basically have been born again and they entered the kingdom, but they're not necessarily going to inherit the kingdom. And there's a difference. See, you enter the kingdom through salvation. This is the door. You enter the kingdom. And you got all this time to develop your spiritual walk with God, and you enter into the kingdom. But when it comes time for you to die, if you've entered the kingdom and you went back into your old ways, God's not going to let you inherit the kingdom. He's just not going to do it. Let me give you these scriptures. They're powerful. They are powerful. Here's what he said. Do you, don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom? He said they will not inherit the kingdom. Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin or those who worship idols or commit adultery or male prostitutes or practice homosexuality or thieves or greedy people or drunkards or abusive or cheat people, none of these will inherit the kingdom. He said none of these will. Mm. Now, you've got to remember, Paul's not writing to heathens here. He's writing to people that came from a heathen background, but now they're born again. He's writing to Christians. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. And then he says this, some of you were once like that, he said. Mm -hmm. Well, it, all sinners are going to be like that. But he says, some of you were once like that. Oh, yeah. But you were cleansed and you were made holy. You were made right with God by the calling on the Lord Jesus Christ. Then at the church at Galatia, he writes this. Mm -hmm. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. And I warn you, as I have before, he said, that those who live like this, and he says the word again to the Galatians, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Hmm. So Paul is saying, I've told you before, but I'm having to tell you again and remind you, you're going back to some of these things. You may have entered the kingdom, sure. but it don't mean you're going to inherit the kingdom when you die. Inheritance only happens when you die. Right. So one more, yeah. one more place here in this Ephesians, so in good. church at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. He said, for this you can be sure that no immoral or impure or greedy person, such as a person who is an idolatry, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God and of his Christ. Mm -hmm. Let no one deceive you with empty words, because such things God wrath comes upon those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. Mm -hmm. So... Here's what Jesus said now, and I'm going to end with this. Here's what Jesus said. He said, many will come to me in that day. Yeah. And here's what he said. They'll say, Lord, Lord, have we not, have, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out devils? Have we not done miracles and all this kind of stuff? Well, the first thing that gives it away is he said, Lord, Lord. He said, first of all, the Bible says, no man calleth Jesus Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So these are Christians. He said, no man calleth Jesus Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So these are people that's had a spiritual experience. The Holy Spirit has shown them that he's the Lord. And he said, many will come to me and say, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out devils? You can't cast out devil if you're a sinner. Only a Christian has the power to cast out devils. And have we not done many wonderful works in your name? And Jesus said, I will say to them in that day, depart from me. And here's what, it, here's what it says, I never knew you. He knows everybody. But it says, I never approved of you, you workers of lawlessness. Well, what's going on today? Mm. Lawlessness is everywhere, including the church. Yes. People won't let a pastor deal with them. They'll pull the shoulder away. I dare you tell me that. That's none of your business. You know, so it's the spirit of lawlessness. He said, I will say to them, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. In other words, you workers of lawlessness, I never approved of you. In other words, here's what happened. I gave you the gift, and you took the gift, but you went out on your own and did it, but you didn't do it under my supervision. Wow. I gave you the power of the Holy Spirit, and you went out there and you did these things, but you never asked me one thing about it. Mm. So what I'm trying to say is this. I think there's going to be a lot of people in the last days that's going to think they're okay because preachers have convinced them they're okay, but they're going to get a shock of their life. Mm. So it's incumbent on preachers now, as never before, to get behind their pulpits and not preach a message of fear right. and not preach a message of insecurity, 
But listen, if I'm on my deathbed and I'm about to go into eternity, I want somebody to tell me the truth. Yes. Absolutely. I want to know the truth. Absolutely. And I don't want some preacher scaring the life out of me. But it says that not all who enter will inherit. So that's what I was preaching at my church that day that you guys heard. 